Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are and wherever you're watching from. We're so glad that you're with us, whether you're watching us live or you're listening to the podcast or later on, we're grateful for you watching the Visual Lounge. Just a reminder, you can find us on all the social media, on all the podcasting platforms. Make sure you, you like, subscribe, do that kind of stuff because that helps us to know that we're making a show that you appreciate and that way you get notified of future shows when they, they release. So go ahead and do that. And you can always email us at thevisuallounge at techsmith.com if you got comments, questions, thoughts, things you want to share with us. All right, we're going to jump in today. So the world, as you know, has changed quite a bit in the last few years. Work is not quite looking the same it did for a lot of us. And we're going to talk about hybrid work strategies and why we're going to talk about that. We'll get that into that into a second. But before we do that, let me introduce our guest. Michelle Massey is responsible for maximizing the impact of the customer experience and growing TechSmith philanthropic impact in K-12 education. Michelle joined TechSmith in 2021 and has more than 25 years of information technology industry experience. Michelle received the 2021 Athena Leadership Award and Downtown Lansing Inc.'s Downtown Dreamer Award for her contributions to the Lansing community. As a strong support of the local community, she has and is sitting on multiple multiple boards, and we are so grateful to have her to talk with us today about hybrid work strategies. With that said, let me welcome Michelle Massey to the Visual Lounge. Hi, Michelle. Hi. Nice to be here. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, you know, we often talk about, we read bios and they're, they're, you have a wonderful bio and lots of accomplishments, but as we get into today's conversation, what's some other things we might want to know about you or you would want to share with us to kind of help us understand who you are? One of the first things is I've worked in multiple companies, so I've had a lot of practical experience through change, not only as an employee, but also in a leadership position as well. And one of the things that I love is that I've joined TechSmith about seven months ago. And so looking at hybrid strategies, I've been able to work at one company and, and see how things operated there, and then come to TechSmith and look at what is being implemented here. So in addition to research and, and looking at trends, I've also have some practical real world experience when it comes to this topic specifically, which I think blends just to a little bit of the what you should look out for, some of the things that I've seen work and, and some of the things that haven't worked so well. So those are the things that I will bring to the conversation today as we start to discuss. Awesome. And we're so grateful that you're at TechSmith. We, we're so privileged to be able to work with you. It's exciting for us. I, I want to ask you a question here as we get going. Uh, we often start broad and kind of kind of get narrow into the more of the nitty gritty. So we're, as a podcast show, we often are talking to people who are talking about creating videos and images. And, and the topic of hybrid work is a little bit of a kind of a like almost a side of that, right? Because we're not talking about the nitty gritty of images and video. So I'm curious from your perspective, why is this a topic that anyone listening should pay attention to uh, regardless kind of other role in the organization they work in? First and foremost, we all have to understand that the world has changed and we are not going back to the future. We're not going back to 2018, 2019, when we felt like we had a firmer grasp on the world. With what has happened to our society, to the, the world as a, as a global whole, we are communicating more via remote tools like Zoom or Teams or Slack than we ever have before. And given that is our current reality, everyone in business and everyone even in their personal lives need to figure out how to weave hybrid into their world. Because even if you're not working in a hybrid work environment, you're interacting most likely with people who are. So they're bringing different perspectives and different thoughts and different ways of working. So technology that TechSmith has, such as Snagit and Camtasia, will actually make life easier. I know a lot of times people get a little bit nervous when we start talking about technology, when we start talking about software 
software. But it's important to know how to use these tools to help enable us to make our business and our personal lives better. And it's exactly the same way. Every time you turn around, there's another version coming out with a set of apps that you can use or another way of doing it. So I think of these tools is just like that. You have to learn it once, but once you learn it, your life is much easier. Yeah, I, well, I, I love that, right? Because I, I know living in this hybrid world of that we're in, it's, it's yeah, there's always tools. And I know, like you said, to TechSmith products, it happens to be that Full disclosure, if you didn't know, we work for the company that makes Camtasia and Snaggy. But I, but I love that. Like, I, 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 if I can share this experience that you were at, I, I'd asked you to get a microphone for our conversation. We wanted our quality to be, uh, be good. And you asked me a question about like, well, what do I do with it? And I thought, well, I started, I literally started typing an email to you. And then I'm like, wait a second, this, that's not going to be, what do I call that thing that holds the microphone? I had no idea. So I took a screenshot. And I just added those arrows. And I, I hope that was helpful for you. It was absolutely helpful. It was better than writing something in text because now I have to try to translate it and figure it out. But there were the pictures that matched what I actually had for equipment. And I was able to follow it. And I was done in probably five minutes. So I didn't have to go through the little booklet <laughs> that is tiny, tiny writing. And I had to figure it all out and figure what they're trying to say and put part A into part B. It was just absolutely fantastic. And it was it was simple. I mean, from the time I asked the question to the time that you got that back to me, it couldn't have been more than four minutes. So that just goes to not only the practicality, but but the ease of use. And since we can't see each other face to face, it was a great way for using a hybrid environment to get me the information that I needed quickly. Yeah. So, so Michelle, you've talked a little bit about the technology kind of like learning, to, you know, taking time to learn the technology and how important the technology it enables uh, us to communicate in different ways. And, and hopefully we're finding more effective ways. What role do you think, kind of stepping back for a second, what role do you think organizational culture plays here uh, in the kind of establishing proper hybrid kind of remote work environments? Does it, does it have a place here or is that a kind of something that has a, a role to play? A absolutely. And research shows that one of the biggest concerns that companies have today is about losing their culture in the hybrid environment. And this is especially true in the, the tech industry because you're looking for ways to differentiate yourself from the competition or just from other people that are trying to enhance their own set of employees. Because as we know, there is a little bit of an employee drain going on and there are a lot of jobs openings for people. So if I can't bring people into the office for them to experience who we are, what we do and what makes us special and unique, then how do I get that, that, that culture across in a hybrid environment? So when we start looking at, at culture and hybrid, that is one of the areas where you have to start adjusting a little bit. And one of the ways that you can it's not even changing your culture, it's almost ad adapting your culture a little bit. So if your culture has transparency, integrity, honesty, some of those core values, you don't lose those, you just have to figure out how to enhance those in a hybrid environment. So for example, when you look at your managers, giving them more flexibility to interact with employees where they're at. So it takes a little bit more time to have one-on-ones on a weekly basis because you're not walking around and I'll say managing by walking around and seeing what attitudes are and seeing what types of feelings people have for that day. So managers have to spend more time doing that 
in a one-on-one -on -one setting or in a small group setting. So when we talk about what companies can do to maintain that culture, it's giving the managers the time and the flexibility that they need to make their individual teams work in this hybrid environment. And I have found just between two groups that I manage, culture is totally different. I have one set of individuals who are more technical that want to meet once every other week as a group. And then they meet throughout the week as a small group. Then I have another set of um, individuals on a team that they meet every single day for half an hour just to chat, just to talk to each other. If there is some type of business issue that needs to be discussed, they'll discuss it. And then they meet once a week for more of that, I'll call it huddle. So two different sets of individuals doing the same job, but being parts of different teams and they're using this hybrid environment a little bit differently to get what they need and how to communicate with each other in this new environment. So that's one very specific example. But if we're looking just keeping it broad in general, when it comes to culture, the one thing that you need to make sure is that you have great communication and that you're not only communicating to people, but you're listening and understanding on um, what's coming back from them as well. And on the employee side, they need to understand that you're navigating sort of uncharted territory. So for both parties, a little bit of grace, a little bit of understanding, and then also being able to, in a constructive way, let each other know what's working and what's not working, that will help maintain that, that culture in, in the workplace and understanding that the processes that we had before we really went hybrid may not be the processes that we have today that help maintain that culture. So maybe there were in-person meetings all the time and you brought snacks in and everybody just sort of bonded before the meeting, you know, the meeting before the meeting. Well, in a hybrid environment, you maybe have DoorDash sent to the homes. You still get together beforehand. You're still sharing that, that snack environment with each other. You're just doing it just a little bit differently. So it's not necessarily that you have to change your culture, especially if you loved your culture. What you have to do is figure out how to adapt in this new environment and bring that culture forward forward through it in unique and interesting means. And I always say that the people that are part of the company often have better ideas than the people who are running the company. So asking people what they want and what they would like to see is the first step because don't assume that people are going to step up if they're not asked. So it's a lot of surveying, asking questions, figuring out and understanding that one size doesn't fit all. Everyone is not in the same place before as they are today, because like all of us, we have personal lives that impact our business lives. That's where it gets back to the managers, understanding the individuals, where they're at and what we need to do. And I know it may sound very employee centered, but without our employees, we don't have the opportunity to build the business that we want. But if we can't build a great business and employees won't have a job. So it's really a win-win situation that we're looking at here. It's not one size fits all. It is about figuring out how to adapt how to keep your culture and how to keep the communication flowing through your organization. Well, you, you hit on a lot of great things there. And I just want to point out for anyone who doesn't know TechSmith, we love food. And so any meeting with food is a good meeting, right? Like that's a, that's a good, good requirement. Uh, so a couple of things I, I, I wanted to ask you out here, because you, you mentioned a lot of this cultural, these cultural issues. And I love the idea that your culture doesn't have to change. It needs to adapt though. And I, which, I don't know, you're, you probably experience this more than I have, is that I think culture has adapt, adapts anyway over time, right? Like I've been at TechSmith now 16, 16 years. The culture is, is definitely different today 
than it was 16 years ago. And I, I, you know, I can't imagine it being successful if it was the same as it was 16 years ago. So as an, let's, I want, you know, you've talked about kind of the management perspective and I can really appreciate that as a, as a newer manager. From an employee perspective, what, what can you do to help manage some of this communication that, that are happening in a hybrid environment? You know, obviously we expect a lot from our leadership. Our management should be kind of rolling and owning a lot of that, that communication. But if I'm an employee and it's not going the way I think it should, what, what, can, what kind of things can I do to make sure there's better communication inside my organization? Well, the first thing that you do is that you talk to your immediate manager always. But if your culture allows experimentation and allows the flexibility to bring changes to the table, that would be the first thing that I would do. It's it's never about bringing a, a issue or a concern. It's about bringing the solution for that issue or concern, because trust me, if you're having a concern, you probably have some inkling as to how you want it resolved. Because as, as great as managers are, as great as leaders are, they're not clairvoyant by any stretch of the <laughs> imagination. And so from an employee perspective, don't just bring the issue, but bring a solution or a set of solutions that you might want to try out, maybe within your own department first. Or maybe if it's a different way of communicating, like using digital capture tools in order to communicate to your team instead of having more meetings, then volunteer to do that and test it out in meetings, get some feedback from the people that you're working with and see if it really is a viable solution to the problem that you're seeing or to what you're trying to resolve. So it, it's a lot about being bold enough to step forward, but also having enough confidence to take that first step and raise your hand first to look at it, to resolve it, or just to experiment with it for a short period of time to see if it really does work. And in, in a mindset, from a mindset perspective, don't go back to 2019 and say, well, they never allowed me to do this before. Or that's not our culture. Trust me, every business is trying to figure out how to effectively navigate through what we're going through, maintain their employees, and make sure that their business is successful as well as their employees. So even if there has been negativity or resistance encountered in the past, don't let that hold you back. Because I think everyone is looking for that opportunity to not only engage better, be better, but, but be profitable and to be a success as we move through this unknown, because we're moving through the unknown, just like, just like you said, you know, the culture changes over time. And because we sort of had this big bang situation thrust on us, we haven't had that, that time to absorb and adjust and for it to organically happen. So we are trying to push things forward just a little bit in order to get us into a better place where employees are trained, employees want to be part of the culture, and employees also want to stay with the company that they're at. So it is really important to take the risk, come up with the solution, and volunteer to see how this solution can make the company better and make the employees more productive. And if you start there, you're going to have a great foundation to move forward. Awesome. Well, Michelle, real quick, I want to maybe step back a little bit because I realized one of the things we, we didn't really clearly define, and maybe it would be good to do so now before we go too much further. When you talk about hybrid work, what what does that mean for, for kind of the average people? I, I, I think we've been assuming, because I, I, we talk about hybrid a lot, uh, but for you, what, is, what does it mean when we say hybrid work? Hybrid work means giving people the opportunity to work from different locations, giving them the opportunity to not only work maybe from home part of the time and in the office part of the time, but for people to have the opportunity to work 
in different geographic locations. It also means that some people in the work environment may be working totally remote. Some people may be working part-time in the office, part-time out of the office. And then it may be that some people are just working remotely in an entirely different state or set of states. And, and what is important to understand about this is that from a business perspective and from an employee perspective, one of the challenges that you're going to face is how do you make sure that people who are in the office and out of the office are getting, and I'll use the term loosely, the same corporate experience. And even if you just take it as simple as a meeting, how do you make sure that people who are not in the office are still part of that collective whole, that their, their vision and their ideas are still getting through to the group and they feel like that they really do have a part in the overall success of the company. And that's where tools come in, that's where norms come in, that's where practices come in. But just to round out the question that you asked me, it's really about people working in different locations, maybe working different hours and being able to still be part of that collective whole. Yeah, perfect. So that actually leads wonderfully into our next question. I'm, I'm curious for you, as, as you lead your teams, as you've been uh, you know, working in a, a variety of different environments, what tips would you give us about having better meetings and communication for hybrid communication? Where if we're in this environment, which a lot of us, I think a lot of people are, not everyone, obviously, but a mm -hmm. lot of people are, how do we, what are some things you can do to make that effective? You've talked about kind of various things. We'll, we'll get really maybe practical at this point. Sure. The, the first thing that you need to make sure is that everyone has the proper equipment that they need to, to be able to communicate effectively, to be heard, and to be able to hear. So that may be looking at bandwidth. It may be looking at someone's Wi-Fi, it, looking at microphones, looking at computers and monitors, and, and, and making sure that everyone is equipped to be able to communicate effectively. And that doesn't just require attention if it's remote, it requires attention in the office too. So if you're going to have meetings in the office, make sure that the video equipment is, is sound and that if you have microphones, people that are at one end of the table can be heard and people at the other end of the table can be heard. So the first thing is just to make sure that the tools are there and that they are operational and people understand how to operate them and, and be effective as well. And don't assume that just because people were using certain technology before they left the office for you know, extended shutdown, that they remember how to do it because they may not. I mean, there are a lot of things that I have just blown out of my mind over the last couple of years <laughs> that may need a little bit of refreshing. So, so it's about making sure that people are comfortable and that people have the, the tools and the technology that they need. There, there's new technology out there as well that are collaboration tools that may help. There's whiteboarding tools. There are chat and communication tools. So, so understanding that if you don't have the right software or the right equipment, that it may take a little bit of an investment to get it so that you can work more, more effectively. The, the next thing that you have to do is have meeting norms. Usually we just jump into a meeting and you know you throw up an agenda and everybody just goes at it. But if you're going to have a hybrid work environment, you have to have some norms just so that people feel comfortable when it's time to speak, so that people understand how we may be working a little bit differently. And so, there's something that that they call Zoom to Zoom. And where, what it means is that if everyone is Zooming in, and there are some people and maybe in person too, that every person gets an opportunity to speak. So part of the norm and part of the agenda is to make sure that everyone is called upon and they get an opportunity to speak. So that is one way of, of making sure that everyone's heard. The other way is to use a collaboration tool so you can ask people 
questions and they can just type in the answers and you can get answers and feedback that way. So no one feels singled out. They can feel like they can express themselves. And then the other the other thing that's great with tools like Zoom is that if you have something to say, you can just push the little yellow hand button and the hand comes up and the facilitator of the meeting knows that someone has a question or would like to speak. So it's, it's about using the tools that are out there effectively, making sure that employees have the, the the norms that are going to operate for these meetings and then also making sure that you record meetings because everyone is not going to be able to be at every single meeting and so if you record it then people can stay caught up you can have the information fresh so you're not taking 150 notes you can just go ahead so if you're looking at where something may have improved than before covid and before the pandemic it's that because if i was on vacation no one was recording squat i mean you just had to go to someone and get caught up right now using these tools people are comfortable in their brady bunch environment and they don't mind being recorded and they don't mind having that information available as long as it's confidential and as long as it doesn't leak out anywhere and that's the beauty of it too if you're really going to talk about something that is strictly confidential you can stop the recording discuss and start it back up again so it gives you some flexibility to, to keep those video archives and yet you can still have the confidentiality that some meetings truly do require so those really are the the first tips, making sure that people have the right equipment, that they're comfortable with the equipment, that there are norms that are established for the meetings. And as with everything in this environment, make sure that there's a constant feedback loop. Make sure that people have the opportunity to express themselves and not feel threatened because it's only going to make this experience better. And you have to realize people are really used to synchronous communications and, and using asynchronous communications by communicating through video and different types of media will, will help get people comfortable at maybe not being in person all the time and feeling like they're missing out. So that is, that is important as well, that you don't have the people in the office versus the people who aren't in the office. And the more that we can use these tools and these communication methods to level the playing field, the better everything is going to be. Yeah, I, well, I, I really appreciate, one, the, the idea of norms. I think it's it's such an important team aspect of understanding how people are going to interact and work. And then you're right, what you said about recording the meetings. Well, I'm also a fan of, of maybe not having as many meetings and recording the key kind of like delivery information. I find oftentimes we, we go into not all the meetings, and I think particularly we're, we've been getting better at this, but like there's this like, here, here's a bunch of information. <laughs> And it doesn't need to be a necessarily a meeting where I'm gathered together with everybody, but there, maybe later for questions and stuff like that. So I can appreciate the thought of, we well, can record the meeting, but you can also maybe preload some of that information as well. Well, M Michelle, we're, we've got a few more minutes. I want to ask just an, another couple of questions. Then we'll get to our speed round questions, which we'll, we'll move through those quickly. But um, I'm curious from a, a, you know, as the world has shifted, obviously, you know, there's new tools to learn. There's new processes. There's new norms. The culture is adapting and shifting. And this creates a lot of pressure because, and, and not just for like kind of day-to-day -day workers, but for management, for leadership, everyone's feeling kind of that crunch of everything that's happening in the office, in the world, and you know, kind of everything's kind of shifting day to day. And I'm curious, how do we become more resilient in our in our kind of ability to make sure we're communicating, uh, we're we're using our resiliency to be effective in our in our roles as employees within the terms of this this new hybrid world? Because, you know, I I'll be honest, I love being at home. I I, have, I think I feel like I've adapted pretty well to being at home compared to being in the office five days a week. Uh, I I wouldn't mind you know I know eventually I'll go back in the office when we're Texman makes that step when we get our new building. Uh, I'll go back in at least once a week. Uh, but uh, you know 
but it's sometimes it's been hard, right? Like it's hard to be resilient. So what advice would you give anyone listening to this about being more resilient in this kind of weird, crazy technology shifting world that we live in? The first thing is a really good knowledge of self. The for, From an employee perspective, I'll hit that first. So have a good knowledge of self. Know what it is that you want from your job. Know what it is that you want to provide and what you are able to provide. The, the next thing that you need to do is to look at understanding what the what the, the goals and the purpose of the organization are and seeing if those are in alignment. If they're not in alignment or if it's something due to the stress or the pressures that you may not be able to do because of other pressing needs, whether personally or otherwise, that's when you can have just a list that you can go to talk to your managers about. And then you can say, I know this is what the expectations are. They've changed because we've lost people or because our, our business model has changed. And, and this is where I am as an employee. And this is what I have to give. Can we work together on this? So giving that advice on the other side of the coin, then the managers have to be able to have the flexibility to meet people where they're at. And I'm not talking about, I only want to work one day a week and get and get paid for five days a week. That, that's not what I'm talking <laughs> about. I'm talking about maybe minor adjustments. I have to drop my kids off at school every day because of this personal situation. So can I come in 15 minutes later to start my day? Or I need to take a lunch hour at 10 instead of at noon because of this. So that's what I'm talking about, flexibility, adjusting, and making this work. But but managers have to be able to have some of those soft skills that maybe we didn't focus enough on previously, but, but being able to be, be empathetic, understanding. But the most important part is to have the authority to make those changes and for management to support them when those changes are made. And, and having that, because if you're going to have a transparent environment or people are being transparent and vulnerable with you, it's not, well, thanks for telling me, but go back and do your job. If you're going to be genuine, then you have to genuinely give people the the empowerment that they need to help the employees where they're at so that they can make those adjustments that may be impacting that that win-win situation for for the company which is which is vitally important the the next thing that we need to look at as we're looking at at i'll call it making it making it work is to i still believe in looking at everything as an experiment if we can go on with that mindset of we are going to give this a shot, we're going to give it a try. And if it doesn't work, then we can make adjustments based upon what we've learned. We can go back, but it gives people a sense of where I may not be able to do everything right now. We're going to experiment. We're going to see how we can make this work. And if not, we know it's going to have a fallback. But but having that that atmosphere of, of experimentation that we're going through this together and that gets back to management as well. If they if your managers need to adjust hours for the team and the core work is getting done, because remember, we know what the core mandates are for the business. If if it's not impacting that, then give the the, the employees and their managers the freedom to make those decisions and see how and see how they work. Because, as I said before, one size does not fit all. You may have different departments that have different types of norms based upon their current needs. Now, if there is a place that we need to get to in the future where everyone needs to be back to work five days a week, well, don't boil the ocean. Bring people in gradually. That will help them build up their resilience for what's coming next. And who knows? You may find out that you only need people to come in 
three days a week, or they may only need to be there one day a week. But that's how you build the trust, you build the resiliency, but you also build maybe a better model that was there before than was there before because you you have that opportunity to to make things better and because we don't know what the future holds it would probably behoove all of us in this resiliency factor is that we're going to probably have to be more resilient before things <laughs> start to get back to a, a a normal cadence and that's going to mean change and that's going to mean stress and that's going to mean going into the unknown sometimes and not knowing what's going to come out on the other end but what the assurances of experimentation and knowing that if it's not working so well because we had so many unknowns, we'll keep trying until we get it right. But if we're going to keep trying, you have to give managers empowerment to do what is right and good for the company and for the employee. There has to be a good set of recognition from leadership acknowledging what people are going through, that, that the company is open, and that we still have a job to do, but we want to make sure that we're getting it done as efficiently and as stress-free as, as possible. And the one thing that I, I want to say is that stress is different for everyone. Someone's stress could be, I have five kids, I have to figure out where to get them to and how to get them there. And that could be their stress. Someone else's stress can be, I have a new software product that we're getting ready to launch. I'm a coder. I'm working, you know, 24 seven because there's a launch. And, and that's a different kind of pressure. And and that's where managers and, and building resiliency to help people is really where meeting people where they're at really comes into place. And, and helping people understand that we're working to make things better. If you have stress, we're going to help you through it. But understand that this is a marathon. It's not a race. It's not a sprint. It is a marathon. And so we didn't get here overnight and things may not be perfect overnight. Things are never perfect, but maybe as close, closer to perfect than they are today, but it's going to take us a little bit of time to get there. And as long as we are playing together as a team and no one is trying to take their ball and go home, I think that will be just fine. It's just going to take a little bit of doing and resiliency does take a little bit of time to build up. Well, Michelle, I'm guessing that there's someone who's going to listen to this and be insanely jealous of how <laughs> how good TechSmith is and how grateful we are for those viewpoints. And and I can, I can just say that I, again, having a long history at TechSmith, I can tell you, uh, Michelle is not just talking good talk. This is a walk that we try to walk and I'm, I'm really grateful for that and the example that TechSmith sets. Before we jump into a speed round, I want to again get kind of, can we get nerdy and practical for a second? Let's get nerdy uh, and practical. So, I mean, we're obviously a company, we make software. We we mm -hmm. have a thing that we call, we drink in our own champagne or dog fooding as some people call it, which is, not, but, but that's the, not the desired term. I don't drink, so champagne's not really desirable for me. It's like maybe having a, a Diet Mountain Dew. Uh, but um, I'm curious for you because you've, you've worked other places, you've had lots of experience. How has your communication approaches cha changed now that you've got kind of unlimited access to snag at Camtasia. Have you done things, anything differently now that you are in that environment where it's almost an expectation of us as internally, right? From an external perspective, I get if people, if you're not trying to make videos to replace your meetings or screen more screenshots, but Michelle, I'm curious for you, how, how has that changed uh, since being at TechSmith this seven months? Well, first of all, I have to say that before I joined TechSmith, I was a, a, a snag it user to the nth degree. And, and it's interesting. I used to, part of my job was to write proposals and to communicate that way. And snag it is a great tool just for making your, your presentations and your proposals better, more professional, more 
crisp. I mean, it is it, it is just a great tool to use even for something that is the written word or, or I guess the visual part to it. So I have to say that first. My my use of Snagit has changed because my job and my role has changed a lot too. I did not realize how much it can be used in addition to capturing, but also with simple videos as well. So for, for me, coming from a, a more of a written word type of environment and, and seeing how video can truly change the experience for the the presenter and for the people being presented to there's there's humor that can be infused there's there there are videos within the video that can be infused there are memes that can be infused so when you're when you're watching a a presentation it's gone from being you know, the wah, 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 wah. It's gone to being an experience now that is almost like watching YouTube or watching a movie or watching. So so the, the information, people are captivated. Therefore, they're remembering what they're what they're viewing. And and in addition to that, that's where the world is right now. If you have and an audience, which I'm finding out, I'm doing some things. I work a lot with a team that does a lot of end user support or customer support. So it's how do we draw that audience in so that we're not spending so much time on the phone with them, but they're able to self-help themselves. So if we can create videos that draw them in and show them how to do the work, then we're not trying to explain it to them over the phone. We're just saying, hey, click on this YouTube video. It's right there. We make it entertaining. We make it fun. We make it something that they're going to be like, well, I don't know how to do this, but I'm going to go out to YouTube and I'm going to click on TechSmith and I'm going to see how to do it. The same thing can apply to any industry, not just ours. The other thing that I have taken away from this is that everyone doesn't want to be a face-to-face -face speaker. Everyone isn't comfortable getting up in front of an audience. And the team actually that I'm with, we actually did a Monday morning meeting set of videos that introduced our team to the company. It introduced some of the things that we did. And for example, you can you can break down walls and barriers with just a little bit of humor, a little bit of insight. So for example, some of the people on our team forgot to give their headshot for the video. So we ended up having people's heads on there that were major or minor celebrities. <laughs> and so it was just a little bit of humor with little bubbles above their head and different things like that. And so it, it you you can bring a whole new dimension into the way that you communicate. And to get back to something that you had previously said, if and instead of talking to people, create a video that they can watch again and again and again, so that you don't even have to record yourself. You can be more relaxed, I'll call it behind the camera, and you can take what you want to say and put it into a format that maybe you would not have even been able to articulate in person that well. So it has opened up a whole new world, a whole new dimension for communication, customer engagement, employee creativity, and also a way for leadership to communicate without having to get everybody into a town hall and they can communicate and, and people can listen and hear it. And then often, once people have heard the information and absorbed it, then have the big meeting to so that you can then answer, I'll call them intelligent questions that people have had more than five minutes to think about. So you, it's not saying that you eliminate face-to-face -face communication entirely, 
but but using those tools that we have in order to facilitate a better experience, get better questions, and keep the entire company hearing the same words from the same people and not getting it secondhand or someone's taking notes or those types of, I'll call them antiquated methods now that I'm at TechSmith, I can <laughs> say that because I'm not using those as much anymore. But 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 using those tools to help enhance the experience will go a long way. And I did not realize that coming in. I did, it was a lot of note taking. It was a lot, like I said, of doing, making things more professional, but the video side of it, I didn't realize how dynamic it was, nor how easy it is to use. And that is really important for me is because look, you had to you had to do a snag it for me just to put the microphone together. So if you're going to want me to be able to do a video, it has to be easy. It has to be engaging. It has to be something that even if I don't use the full set of tools, I can do the minimal things and still create something that's professional and engaging. Gets two thumbs up for me. Well, awesome, and I, and I, I I have to say I do I did love your staff videos. Those were were fantastic. <laughs> For everyone who doesn't, we have a cultural me, a meeting every Monday morning. We meet at eight thirty. We go through announcements. We go through kind of updates on projects and big things, and we also get staff introductions. And I loved that you got to do that. You introduced those teams and. We, you know, I love that when we do videos for our new team members, because now in this hybrid environment, I'm not meeting everybody. I don't know who everybody is. And I probably have passed them in the store. I didn't even know that they were my teammate unless they saw my shirt. So, <laughs> well, Michelle, this has been, this has been fantastic. You, you've given us so much to think about. And I, I love the tie up at the end of how it, I think we can take these ideas. And, uh, you know, I can imagine there's maybe some ideas around norms and all these things that we talked about. You can start thinking about how the images you might use, the memes to can convey and remind each other the the videos that it might be created but with that said let's uh you know we've got a few more questions that and just remind everybody speed round questions these are meant to be fast quick answers they don't have to be one word answers but you know we're gonna we're not gonna dwell long term on these so let's go ahead and jump into our speed round okay I'm ready. Okay, Michelle, you have two things in your title. Uh, we've talked a lot about the kind of the, the customer operations, but you're also involved in a community. So tell us just real quickly, what is your role for TechSmith in the community? My role for TechSmith in the community is to make sure that our philanthropic, develop, our philanthropic endeavors are sowing money into the right ground, looking at STEM education, science, technology, engineering, math, and manufacturing, and we've recently included the arts into that, and to making sure that the communities that we live and work in are getting the benefits not only of our software and tools, but of our investments and our money to represent our company and our employees as a whole. Yeah, I, I, and I love that we do that, and I love you're involved in the arts so we can go from STEM to STEAM, uh, and it's, it's fantastic. And thank you for all you're doing there to help us with that. So next question. What's your go-to icebreaker? You know, something to get people involved in this wor hybrid world? What, what kind of things do you do to get people engaged into the meetings? Well, the first thing that I do is it's something called mind track because I think that sometimes now because we're at home and we're in the same office and we're in the same routine that sometimes we need to just get that creativity going a little bit. So it's called mind track. And what it is is that it's a situation and you have to say why that situation is. So, for example, there is a ball up in a tree, but the man makes no attempt to get it down. Why? And so you start thinking football, baseball, basketball, but you should be thinking mothball. You should be thinking spitball. You should be thinking different trees, bonsai tree, coat tree. And I'll give you the answer. The answer is that it's a Christmas tree. So it's a bulb up in a Christmas tree. It's a ball up in a Christmas tree. And so that's why the man's making no attempt to get it down. And you would think that people would think, oh yeah, right. It was a little bit dorky. 
I have about probably 150 of these different situations that I do with the team and it took them a while, but now they are getting them like crazy because they're starting to think a little bit differently, which gets back into the hybrid environment, trying to get the team to think differently about things that they've normally thought about so that we can do things in a different way. And we have come up with some fantastic ideas. I would like to take the credit for it and my icebreaker, but I really know it's them. <laughs> just unleash unleashing their creativity oh well, that's awesome and i love that we'll have to i'll have to keep that in mind for future team meetings uh next question where do you turn for inspiration i turn to for inspiration to people that i know in the community when i have been thinking about anything big i have found that I sit down, take them to lunch, gets back to food, but I take individuals <laughs> to lunch and I say, this is what I'm thinking about. This is what I, I'm, I want to do or what do you think? And getting feedback from other people really inspires me because it makes me think about things in a different way than I wouldn't otherwise think about them. So it's really going to people who are going to encourage me be realistic, but give me thoughts and ideas on on where I need to go or where I want to go or what I'm trying to pursue. So it's really a, a more of a face to face encounter for me. I enjoy reading. I enjoy picking up books, reading good to great reading just books to to get just perspective but when we talk about inspiration that's where i reach out to the people that i know and trust to help give me that inspiration that that i need when i'm i'm looking to to move further or take giant steps forward or i just need that spark of creativity that some of them can give me that's what i do I love it. I love it. I love that it involves food and I love that it's other people because I think uh, I feel very similarly that good ideas beget more ideas, right? It, it's, it, it keeps kind of going and growing. So, okay, last question. I'm going to warn you. This is, and, and unlike most of our guests, you had, you did have a sneak peek. I don't know how closely you paid to it, but everyone tells us this is the hardest question. Okay. okay. So I apologize. It's a hard question. Okay. What question would you like to ask me? Oh, since I have been at TechSmith for going on seven months and you have been here for multiple, multiple years, what is the best advice that you can give me as a new employee? Oh, that's a great one. And I, uh, so I, I do share my advice with uh, our interns as I get to meet because that's what we see a lot of new interns coming through. I, I think uh, a, a couple things. Oh, gosh, which one do I want to share? Uh, speed round answers are hard for me because I get long winded. I think one thing that I like to let people know is that TechSmith is incredibly empowering. And so don't, if you've got an idea, right, bring it up, talk about it, share it, get that input. Because if you can do that, there's a good chance those ideas can at least move forward to, to kind of suss out whether it is really a good idea or not. Uh, the other thing is meet meet as many people as you can. Get to know get to know them. We have some incredible people who are incredibly talented. Um, and I think that those bridges uh, I've seen that they that helps in the long run. We've had some incredible projects come out of TechSmith. Um, I think that happened because of those relationships. And so uh, those those would be two pieces. There's probably a million other things I could say. You know, when we're in a building, like don't forget to get your free lunch and uh, on on Fridays or, or your your soft drink or coffee or whatever. <laughs> those are always fun <laughs> ones too. So. Thank you. Well, well, Michelle, thank you so much for spending time with me today. Uh, we're so grateful for all the things that you've shared. And, uh, you know, if anyone wanted to learn more, reach out, uh, is there someplace they could connect with you at? Sure. You can connect with me at m.massey, M-A-S-S-E-Y, at techsmith.com. I am pretty good at responding within the first 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> We'll see, you know, if you get flooded or not. But, you know, thank you for sharing that. And thank you again for sharing all your wisdom with us today. You're welcome. All right, everybody. Thank you so much to Michelle once again. She's fantastic.
And with that said, whether you're working on your meetings, improving your meetings, getting your culture better, just being a better uh, employee for your organization, making taking strides to communicate better, or you're working on your videos, your lighting, your mics, whatever it might be, we hope you take a little time to level up every single day. We'll see you all next time.